everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined once again by Jim Sadis of FanDuel. Jim, what's happening? It is all good, Greg. Some more PGA coming up this week, the third event since the end of the COVID-19 layoff. So a little bit of data to work with, which is always good. We should buy that data when we should sell it. So some fun decisions to make on this slate for sure. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm excited to talk golf once again. Everybody's talking about the PGA Tour right now, so we should be among the many and get right into it. And I really, really good stat before we started recording that Bryson DeChambeau, stat-wise, has done everything he can do except win. Is that going to change this week here, Jim? Yeah, there is a tier of three golfers at the top this week. It's Justin Thomas, Rory McIlroy, and Bryson DeChambeau. And I don't think you can go wrong with any of them, but personally, I think that DeChambeau is in a really good spot here. I'd rank Rory right behind him, but it's hard to put JT third. So I like all these guys, but the reason I have DeChambeau first is that I think if we're looking at short-term form, he grades out really well. Over the long term, he ranks third in this field in good drive rate over the past 50 rounds, uh, based on the stats over at FantasyNational.com. That's obviously good for a course that rewards golfers who can either hit a fairway or at least put in a decent spot to make up ground if it's not specifically on the fairway. DeChambeau length over the past couple of months that's certainly good as well at a course where length does matter even though it is a bit of a shorter course as well from an approach perspective recently DeChambeau has been nuts putting that muscle to good use he has gained 10.7 strokes on approach the past two weeks he's $11,700 I think that Rory is definitely interesting as a bounce back candidate after a couple of just kind of okay outings. He's still been good tee to green. Hasn't got the finishes to show for it. So Rory's in a good bounce back spot. But I think among those top three studs, I'm going to go Bryson DeChambeau. The length is great. He has stats to back up uh, the good finishes he has had. And the stats show, like you said, he could be. The stats are backing up. As you said, Jim, everything is there for Bryson DeChambeau to come away with a victory or at least provide what we need over our fan build. There's a top three, like you said. Bryson DeChambeau is the one you want in your lineups. You know, we said last week, you're going to put Rory McIlroy in your lineup each and every week. But you didn't this week. You went with Bryson instead. But the other guy that's been in your lineup seemingly every week is the X-Man, Xander Shoffley. This week is no different. Xander's in there here. Why do you think that Xander makes sense to put in your fan to a lineup once again? Yeah, I think that looking at this specific course, Xander Shoffley seems to be one of the most well-rounded statistical golfers in this entire field. And he's not priced like a top end stud at 11 two. So I think it's a really good number to get for a guy who has win odds as good as third or better in all the key stats I'm looking at for this weekend. Uh, the putting on Poa and Bentgrass, pretty solid for sure. But everywhere else, he's, he's a legitimate stud. He's 10th in good drive rate the past 50 rounds. He is 17th in approach. He is 20th in scrambling. So checking all the boxes from a stats perspective. Xander doesn't have a super long course knowledge here, but he has at least been here. And there are a lot of golfers who have not been to this course for a long time because the field is a lot better than it has been in the years past. It's good to know that Xander at least has course knowledge. Finished 14th here in 2017. I'm not counting that as a huge mark in his favor, but it is at least something. And looking back to the last week, Xander definitely faltered over the weekend. He lost 2.3 strokes in approach last week, but... That was after he gained 3.3 on approach week before that and contended for a win 8.1 strokes to gain T to green in the first match backs. So it seems like, once again, a good bounce back spot for him. Uh, he's $11,200. I think that if you start with DeChambeau and Xander, it allows you to avoid some really, really bad uh, tiers from a salary perspective for this week. So I'm trying to avoid the super cheap value plays if I can. And starting off with a little bit less of a studly approach with Bryson followed by Xander at least gives me some help in getting to that goal. I like it. You put Xander and Bryson DeChambeau in there so you could avoid the really, really, really bad players a little bit later on. It's really building a full lineup. I like what you're doing here, Jim. Obviously, Xander didn't have the weekend we hoped for this past week, but strokes gained the week before, pretty good. We'll see if Xander uh, can get it going here this weekend as well. Up next for us, Jim, we get to another one of our favorites. It's Kevin Kisner. He's priced at $9,400 here this week over on FanDuel. And the kid is always a uh, – uh, has an opportunity, I should say, to win it. This week, no different. Yeah, absolutely. And the reason that we're going to go with a little bit of a cheaper mid-range play here is because, again, 
I'd like to avoid the $8,000 golfers because it's not great, Bob. So we're trying to stay in the low 9,000s. I love the upper 9,000s too. Guys like Victor Hovland uh, is up there. Tony Finau is there. Joaquin Neiman. They're all really good. But I also like this low 9,000 range. And if I can live in this range and avoid the 8,000 range, that's kind of the goal for me. So let's talk about Kevin Kisner here. I think that, like Xander Schauffele, checks a lot of boxes statistically. He is 33rd in good drive rate, 41st in approach, 12th in scrambling, and 13th in putting on either POA or bent grass over the past 100 rounds. And he used that good stance profile, finished 15th on this course last year. The approach play for Kisner since resuming, resuming play has been in the first two events, so it's not great. But he's $9,400. Seems like a pretty high floor golfer uh, with at least a path to his thing. It's not the most likely outcome for Kevin Kisner, but I think it's definitely there. And I think the big appeal, again, for me of Kevin Kisner is he helps me avoid dipping into the 8,000s, which I desperately want to do. So I think that this this low 9,000 range pretty good, and Kevin Kisner is a big reason I like this range. It's all about the price this week for Jim Asanas on FanDuel because you don't want to have to go too low here um, in the FanDuel prices. You get Kevin Kisner at $9,400. We're avoiding the low $8,000, like you said. Bryson DeChambeau, Xander Shoffley, Kevin Kisner. They are our top three here this week on FanDuel. Which leads us to our fourth golfer, and that's Brian Holman, who I believe is in the lineup for back-to-back weeks here as well, Jim. $9,200. You basically just have the guys that you like, and you're rolling with them. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it because Brian Harmon's been fine uh, for a pretty decent sample now, and he's still on $9,200. And the thing I like about Brian Harmon is that he checks all the boxes, good stats, good form, and good course history. He has been 60, he ranks 61st or better in all the key stats, and 61st is not like great or anything, but it's definitely, <laughs> it means that there are no major weak spots in his game. He's a good putter on Poa and Ben Crass. I like that. He can scramble as well. So the short game, not a concern for Brian Harmon whereas it is for a lot of guys in this tier. And he's also at least okay from a ball striking perspective. He has finished well here in the past, knows this course well, finished third in 2015. He was sixth in 2018, eighth last year, aided by good putting in those finishes. So they're not necessarily sustainable, but again, he is generally an above average putter on these greens. He has gained 1.7 and 3.8 strokes and approach the past two events. So if he can keep that up and not totally suck off the tee, you could get a solid top 25 finish and it may cut out of Brian Harmon. $9,200, I think, is a really good number for him. If you are looking for some more upside, I do like Joel Damon at $9,400. I think that he is in this tier as well. Definitely on board with that. And Jason Day is super cheap on FanDuel, $9,400. Uh, the risk is high, uh, but the risk is high for everyone else in this tier too. So I'm okay taking some stabs at Jason Day at $9,400. But among those three guys, I'm going to rank Brian Harmon number one at $9,200. I never thought I'd see the day that you'd find Joel Damon in the tier and you didn't say he was the best golfer in that tier. I saw <laughs> all the people tweeting about Joel Damon this weekend, and I was, uh, I, I kind of felt robbed. Like, this is our thing, and I didn't think that other people were in on it as well. But it seems that we've moved on. Brian Harmon, which is good at a little bit of everything, except off the tee, puts, a, puts him in a really good spot this week, especially in this price range. Jason Day, we know what the reward is. We also know what the risk is, which makes Brian Harmon seemingly the safest golfer in this tier. Let's move on. A couple of longer shots here. $8,900. It's Chez Reedy in there, another guy that we're used to putting in. Uh, in this tier, we don't have to drop all the way down into the low 8,000s. So we get Chez Reedy at $8,900. So we're paying up here in this middle tier. Reedy, a guy, obviously, that you like, Chip. Yeah, like is potentially a generous word, but I dislike him less than the others. Maybe we'll phrase it that way, which is weird because Chez won here last year. And we should be like, oh man, Chez Reeve, he's $8,900. That's awesome. And there are other things that he does well. But even with Chez Reeve, the defending champion, there are enough concerns where I do want to avoid this tier. So I think what I'm doing, Greg, this weekend is kind of rotating through the super, the, the value plays, making my core plays be the more expensive golfer and then rotating through through value plays. One of those rotational pieces will be Chez Reedy because, again, he won here last year. That's definitely good. Uh, the ball striking stats are solid. He ranks 7th in good drive rate, 27th in approach over the past 50 rounds. He's a decent putter on these surfaces. I think that that all makes a lot of sense. And last year, it was not a win that was fueled by putting for Chez. He was, he was awesome. He gained 11.4 green, which was the most in the field. So the reason I'm down on Reavy a bit is because I don't feel great about what he has done the past two events, uh, but 
his profile on the whole is still better than the profile of most other guys in this range. So rotating through everyone in this tier, but I think within those rotational pieces will be Chez Reby at $8,900. While the form isn't great, the course history is. He won last year. We should be higher on him. We should be happy to put Ches Reeve in our lineup. We should, in fact, like him. It's not a strong word here that we like him. It's the right word. Ches Reeve at $8,900, despite the immediate form, it's worth it. One last golfer to get to, Jim, and that brings us to Lucas Glover. He's the cheapest golfer here that is in our lineup this week, and he's priced at $8,600. Not bare minimum by any means. Lucas Glover, $8,600. Why do you think he's worth taking a shot on? Yeah, I think there are a couple of things that are working in Lucas Glover's favor this weekend. Uh, the first thing is that he's played well since the end of the layoff. He's gained at least three strokes in approach in both the events since they returned to play, and he's gained at least 4.3 strokes tee to green. He used those good numbers in the ball striking category five in both events. So the finishes have been there. The ball striking has been there. That's kind of all you can ask for a golfer in this range. And the second thing is that Glover's best surface is POA. And he's better on bent grass than he is on Bermuda. This is a POA bent grass kind of mix here for the greens for this weekend. So should be better putting for Lucas Glover. I can't say good, less terrible than usual. Again, we'll phrase it that way intentionally. And he's only $8,600. And we know that Glover can golf well in spurts, specifically with his ball striking stats. So I can live with that, at least in this range. So I think that Lucas Glover makes sense. I mentioned that again, I'm going to rotate through. So we're rotating through Chez Reavy, Lucas Glover, I think Max Homa, Harold Varner III. Those are guys to be focusing on. If you want to go super low, Doc Redmond is in play at $8,100. But the, the number of golfers I am intrigued by below $9,000 is not that great. Uh, so I'm trying to stay above that when I can. But once I do get down here, Lucas Glover is one guy I feel very okay using at times in my lineups. I love it. There are certain times we feel very okay with Lucas Glover. This is a time where I think we're just okay. We're not very okay. We're okay with Lucas Glover and the putting will be not so terrible. And maybe he'll make the cut and, and maybe he'll do some damage for us on FanDuel. Uh, there you have it. Jim, we appreciate the time. Lucas Glover in our lineups, as is Bryce DeChambeau, the X-Man, Kevin Kisner, and more. We appreciate you watching. Jim, good luck this weekend. Thank you, Greg. The same to you. Looking forward to talking to you again next week, and hopefully things go well for us this weekend. We can only hope so. Have a great night, everybody. Get those lineups in there. Enjoy the week. and Stay safe, everybody.